A very good morning to you. Welcome to the West Ham Boys on a Saturday morning. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, a new show for you. Well, kind of a new show because it's an old show and I've kind of rehashed it uh, to bring bring it a little bit more up to date. And hopefully I'll be able to do it on a regular basis. Now, it's called, as you know, I do the West Ham Weekly on a Monday night. And this is called, well, surprise, surprise, the West Ham Daily. Now, I will try to bring you a daily show, but please don't uh, fret if I don't. Uh, and the idea of it is I'm looking at uh, all the latest news stories that uh, are out and about, and I'm just going to be bringing you an update on those stories. So uh, quite a few different ones uh, today, uh, obviously uh, a roundup of the international friendlies, uh, a little bit of an update on uh, Will Still, uh, and also Everton and, uh, and one or two other things like, like a ground share with one of our uh, rivals, um, Chelsea. So I'm going to go through them one by one. So first of all, let's start off with the internationals. Uh, it was a busy Friday uh, of, interna of international action where a number of West Ham players uh, kicked off with victories. Uh, Mohamed Kudush and uh, Dinos Mavropanos. Uh, and there was a senior academy of football debut for defender Michael Forbes for the Northern Ireland team. So let's start off with uh, Kudush first. Um, he was in action for Ghana in their 2026 FIFA World Cup uh, qualifying Group One, Group uh, One stage um, again, and they had a dramatic victory, a one-nil victory over Madagascar in Kumasi on Friday uh, night. Chris Hooten's side scored in the sixth minute of added time when the Athletic Club striker Inaki Williams headed high into the net, sparking wild celebrations that saw Kudus get a booking. The Black Stars head uh, to the island of Comoros in the Indian Ocean for their second tie on Tuesday, the 21st of November. Ghana and their two opponents are joined in group, sorry, not group one, group I by Central African Republic, Chad and Mali. So well done to uh, uh, Kudush for uh, uh, a winning start in uh, their uh, World Cup qualifiers. Dinos Mavropanos was in the Greek side, which overcame New Zealand 2-0 in a 2-0 friendly uh, uh, in which was played in Athens. The centre-back uh, had a fairly comfortable afternoon uh, at the uh, Georgios uh, Kamara's uh, stadium, home of second-tier side Apollon Sminis. Goals from uh, Giannis Constantelias of Park and Atlanta United striker Georgios Kukumas. you think I'd know these names, wouldn't you, uh, in the first half secured the win. Greece will uh, compete their UEFA Euro Sorry, Greece will complete their UEFA Euro 2024 Group B qualifying campaign at home to Alphonse Ariola's France in Athens on Tuesday the 21st. A victory combined with the Netherlands failing to win at home to the Republic of Ireland and an away and away to Gibraltar will see Greece finish second and secure automatic qualifications. So good luck to them. Um, next up is uh, Callum Marshall, was a uh, um, second half substitute uh, alongside Michael Forbes um, for Northern Ireland, uh, brought on by my, uh, manager Michael O'Neill in their 4-0 defeat uh, by uh, Finland in the Helsinki Olympic Stadium. Forbes made his debut uh, for the senior side, whilst Marshall earned his third cap uh, but Northern Ireland were already three goals down when the two young hammers were introduced. Uh, this was a seventh defeat in nine Group H uh, qualifiers. And with qualif qualification beyond them, Northern Ireland will hope to finish their campaign on a winning note when they host Denmark on Monday the 20th uh, of November at Windsor Park in Belfast. Uh, later on on Friday evening, uh, man in action was uh, Vladimir, uh, Vladimir Sufal and Thomas Socek. Thomas Socek scored a, a, a goal for Czech Republic, which kept their hopes of automatic qualification uh, from Group E alive with a 1-1 draw away to Poland. With leaders Albania drawing 1-1 in Moldova, three countries can now still finish in the top two. A home win or draw with Moldova on Monday will see the Czechs guarantee a top two finish, regardless of how Albania fare at home to the Faroe Islands. With Poland having completed their fixtures, only a defeat can now deny um, the Hammers uh, a qualification into the Euros. Uh, Jared Bowen was an unused substitute in the 2-0 uh, win of England over Malta at Wembley Stadium in Group C. Uh, England won their group, travelled to the Tose Proeski 
Aranat Stadium to face North Macedonia on Monday in their final qualifier game. Uh, another player, academy goalkeeper Finley Herrick, was an unused substitute uh, as England were defeated 2-1 by Brazil in their third and final Group C tie at the FIFA Under-17 World Cup Finals in, in Indonesia. Right, what other news do we have for you? Well, um, Vladimir Sufal, we've been speculating what might happen with Vladimir Sufal. And a story broke on Claret and Hugh on Friday night uh, that uh, West Ham United will take up the option on his current deal, which uh, runs out at the end of the season. And he will be offered an extended one-year contract. Claret and Hugh uh, learned exclusively on Friday that the Hammers board is currently agreeing terms of the new offer, which will soon be put to the Czech international right back before Christmas. This follows on from Thomas Socek's recent agreement of signing a four-year deal. Right, what else do we have? Well, according to Sean Whetstone of Six Foot Two, um, David Sullivan did not speak to Will Still, were the starred the Reem, uh, starred Reims manager, when he visited London Stadium last weekend to watch West Ham United play Nottingham Forest. Rumours have been flying around uh, uh, social media that the two were seen talking near the director's box after the game. Sullivan said that this was just mischievous nonsense, which simply served to unsettle things inside the club. Sullivan made it clear, still would not be the club's choice, telling us in answer to a question, no, I did not speak with him. I admire what he's done, but too much of a gamble. In a few years, never say never. I think he came as a genuine supporter. I have never spoken to him. These are just mischievous reports that unsettle the club and are totally made up. Stad Reams boss still has been regularly lined up for uh, Hammers uh, 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 on a number of websites as the, as the um, man to take over from David Moyes as the new manager. Well, it seems that Sullivan has made it quite clear that David Moyes is actually going to remain in place for some time to come, as it's far too early to consider a replacement and that no discussions have been held between Moyes and, and Sullivan over his future. Sullivan has stated quite clearly that when the time's right, he'll sit down with Moyes later this season to have, such, to have that kind of discussion, which seems to imply that uh, quite clearly that David Moyes is going to be here for the rest of this season and not um, po possibly leaving uh, before the January transfer window opens, which I even talked about the other day. Right. What of the stadium? Well, there's some interesting stories that have come up about the stadium recently. Um, it's emerging as uh, uh, Allianz is emerging as the leading contender to, to secure the naming rights for West Ham's, West Ham's London Stadium uh, and the wider Olympic Park in Stratford. The London Legacy Development Corporation has been criticised in the past for not securing a sponsor for the iconic home uh, of the 2012 Olympic Games. Uh, but it's understood negotiations, negotiations are now in an advanced stage. Now, while there is no timescale on talks, it's anticipated they will e eventually reach a positive conclusion. Although the London Stadium itself continues to lose money, the LLDC believes that the increasing number of events attracted to it, including Major League Baseball, uh, which will return for another two-game uh, two series in June, and the wider development of the site means it is attracting visitors to the area in growing numbers and is becoming of value. Now, while West Ham United as tenants are not involved in the negotiations, they have been kept informed and are not thought to have raised any objections. Financial services company Allianz are long-standing sports sponsors and have already had their, their naming rights to prestigious stadiums like Bayern Munich, Juventus and the rebuilt Sydney Football Stadium. West Ham would only profit from this uh, deal if the uh, stadium agreement reach exceeds £4 million. And another story about uh, the stadium that uh, has come up uh, again, actually, is the potential ground share between West Ham United and Chelsea could still be on the agenda. Now, I mentioned this uh, earlier this, this year when it was reported that Chelsea had held talks with the LLDC who own the stadium, about whether they might be able to share the West Ham ground whilst they reconstruct Stamford Bridge. 
Now, Chelsea have uh, considered the purchase of the site at where the old Earl's Court Exhibition Centre is, and they also had plans to build a new 60,000 capacity uh, seat a stadium at Stamford Bridge, which would likely cost up to £2 billion and four years to complete. Uh, with the Exhibition Centre now looking to be off the table, Chelsea faced the prospect of having to revisit the redevelopment of Stamford Bridge. Watch this space as things, as things may develop, leading us to having to share the stadium with our North London rivals. I wonder how we'd all feel about that. And finally, I've got to speak a little bit about uh, dear old Everton. Uh, look, um, the news has been uh, 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 we, we've heard is that they've been given a 10 point deduction with immediate effect, uh, which has left many football fans somewhat bemused. The deduction drops them into joint bottom of the Premier League, giving several clubs around them hope that they'll avoid relegation because of it. Now, to be quite honest with you, uh, there's still plenty of football to be played this season. And now, whilst there isn't much argument why Everton have been penalised because of uh, Premier League financial rules, many fans are right to ask, why is it that both Man City and Chelsea have yet to be penalised uh, with, with some of the uh, rules that they've broken. And if the penalty is to be meted out fairly, it would mean that both City and Chelsea should be docked enough points and drop enough uh, leagues uh, for them to both end up at the bottom of the AFL for several years to come. But we know money talks. Both uh, Man City and uh, Chelsea are very rich clubs and will always find ways not to lose out, whereas the Premier League have now set quite a da dangerous precedence by doing what they've done to Everton. To be honest with you, I think Everton's appeal, um, when they do appeal, will be successful based purely on the fact that the Premier League are being selective over who does and who doesn't get penalised uh, for Premier League financial uh, rule, rule breaking. That's it. Short, brief. I'll bring you more. It will be a number of stories uh, coming from various social media sites. If you like this um, uh, uh, approach, this kind of video, do leave your comments at the bottom of uh, the video and let me know. And if you're, if you fat, if you like what what I've done, I'll carry on doing them as often as I can. Thank you all for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. Look, hey, no football to worry about. Uh, we'll have that next weekend, won't we? Have a great weekend, and I'll see you all very soon.